Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing great. I hope you all watched the first video, that's the previous video about the introduction of the EOT. And now we begin with the first part and the first topic here. It is about estimating an arc length of a given question. Again, a quick reminder that the first part is question 1 to 15 and these will be in MCQs where you'll have four options. So I will stick to the shortcut methods over here. Here in this particular problem, we have been asked to find the arc length uh, depending on n equals 4 or n equals 8 or you can, you know, you can find it larger ends. Now the most easiest way for this is finding it with the integral formula. You will come to learn about integrals in the next term, but if you re recall this, if you just remember this formula, it is more than enough because you can use calculator and directly solve it. Now, there are a few things to be noted in this formula. That's this f dash. So the given function will be f of x. That will be given to you. You need to derive this function and then you will get f dash of x. Maybe trigonometry or polynomial. You must use the laws, say, for example, power, power rule or trigonometry rules and then derive it. And this A and B will be given, it's always ascending order, say the range is x less than or equal to 1. Then now here this will be the A value and then this will be the B value. It starts the interval where it's given. So that's it. That's the only two things, the three things you need to know. The derivative needs to be found out. A and B, substitute in this formula and you will get the answer all the time. You will learn more about this in the next term. Now let us look into the formula, look, look into the problems and solve. Please remember this formula. Try to remember it thoroughly. Now uh, just look over here. Integral AB square root 1 plus f dash of x all square. The square, the derivative is only squared. Don't extend the square. It's only for the f dash of x term. Now imagine the problem is like this. We need to use our calculators for this. But before that, Let's derive the functions. What is given to us? f of x, right? What is the derivative? f dash of x. That will be, since it's cos, negative sign will start and then it is sine x. That's it. Your a value is given as 0, b value is given over here. The formula for arc length, arc length is given as integral a to b square root 1 plus sorry it's not a square root again it's square f dash of x the whole square dx dx term nothing we don't touch it because that will be already there whenever you are you're taking an integral this is naturally there you will learn more about this in the next term for now just remember this formula use your calculator all you need to do is type this. So where is that? Let me bring it at the center of the calculator. I hope it's clear now. You can see this. If you press shift and integral, it's derive at you. But if you press the symbol directly, you're going to get integral. And you can see dx is already there. You don't touch it. You, you don't change it, sorry. Now, all you do is put the square root symbol. 1 plus, what is f dash of x? It's most important to use a bracket here. Now, it's negative sine x, right? Negative sine, use alpha x, close the bracket once, that is for x. And now one more time because you open the bracket. And remember, there are two brackets. And now press the square. And now what is the a value? a value is 0, b value is over here pi. Now, we know that whenever we use sine, we need to change this more to radian because it's in pi terms, that's radian terms. Shift more and four. And now press equal to, you will get the answer. That is, what just happened? One minute. Oh, I, I just realized that I put pi here. I'm sorry for that. Okay, it's uh, good to know the mistake. If you just change the value, the, the intervals, you get wrong, okay? Now, divided by two, I thought I'll be editing that part, but I've kept it so that you don't do the mistake what I just now did. Remember, a is 0, uh, b is pi by 2, and just press equal to, you will get the answer. Now, 1.9100, uh, you can approximate it 9101. 
Now the other answers as well are very very close to this so you will have four options one answer which is very close to this is the correct one if they ask you the actual length anyways it's directly found over here. Now as you increase the n values you will come towards this value okay if you increase maybe four more you are going to get this value itself. Now if you're thinking how is this done this is the detailed method now how is this done here the intervals are given right. So basically, you're breaking those interval into four parts. Now, uh, this is cos curve. Cos is some, if you have, wait, let me just do this. Now, imagine cos curve. It starts from here, from one, and then it keeps on going like this, and then it comes down, up, like this. Now, since we have zero to this part over here, where it finishes, the period is 2 pi for a cos graph. This middle term would be pi here and pi by 2 means over here, okay, pi by 2 and 0. Now, if you're finding this curve directly, you, you approximate it as a straight line, linear line, and we won't get an accurate answer. So what we do is we take interval from 0 pi and we take four intervals. That means we break this line. The curve is there, right? This curve, we break it into four parts, 1, 2, three and four and then we consider this to be linear linear and we solve them we find them and then add the length so it is more accurate whereas over here in the second part they are telling nine intervals that means this part is cut into sorry eight n is equal to eight that means it's cut into eight little bit of intervals small intervals and you're finding eight individual lengths you know basically and then we find it that that's how you get accuracy you know as you cut into smaller and smaller pieces it'll be more accurate so that is the thing but since it's an mcq just remember the calculator method that's more than enough the last part i just for your the told that for your understanding that's it let us go to the next problems as well let's just check this out what about this one whenever you see any of this problem first thing what you do is find the derivative no first write the formula sorry let me write it arc length equals it would be integral a to b square root of 1 plus f dash of x the whole square dx and what is the a value given over here a value is 0 b value is pi by 2 now all you need to do is use your calculator and solve here we have I'm just going to change over here because the interval is same. Just me just being lazy. Oh, I forgot to find the derivative. My bad. Now, what is f dash? f dash of x equals cos x. That's it. Now, you have, because it's sine, it's positive. So, now you have f dash of x, a and b. All you need to do is substitute over here. And instead of the sine, I'll just change cos you need to type it out entirely again, but now since it was the same thing, I'm just typing it out. And the answer is 1.91. Let's just check. Yes, the answer is 1.91. Now, it should be the same because the first question was cos, second is sine. What is the difference between those two graphs? I mean, you can skip this part if you, um, you know, if you don't want to understand more, but if you're just like, you know, thinking it logically, let me just tell you here, Cos graph just starts from here and it goes on. It starts from 0, 1. But a sine graph starts from 0, 0. That's the only difference, you know. And now say till pi by 2. It's the same curve. Doesn't matter what. The same curve, right? The curve like the same. It's just the alignment is different. So the answer must be same for the same interval. That's the thing, okay? Now then, you can check the answers are the same. Over here we have, let me just solve this as well. Uh, let me just first write the formula. We have already written it, so I'm just going to, you know, just change this part only. Okay, here we are. What is the derivative of root x squared x plus 1? I'm not going to derive entirely, but you must know by now square root x what's its derivative this is the function the derivative of that would be 1 by 2 root x okay you might be thinking why but this is from the uh, power rule formula 
I'll just tell you quickly for this one. Now, root x means it's x to the power half. Now, we use power rule here. It'll become half into x to the power half minus 1 will give you negative half. But we don't usually keep the powers in negative, so we, we will make this positive by taking it to the denominator. 1 by x to the power half, this is it. Now, we don't write x to the power half, we can write it in a nice way, 1 by x, 1 by root, 1 by 2 root x. So this is the formula. But you do not need to solve it every now and then for root x. Just remember this is the formula, 1 by 2 root x. So if you remember so much, you can directly substitute this. Now here, look, what is the formula? What is inside uh, the square root? Instead of x, we have x plus 1. That's fine. Just relate this 1 by 2 instead of root x, write x plus 1. And then it's a chain rule. You need to derive this. But look, when you derive this, it's going to be 1. So it's the same, you know. What is the derivation of x plus 1? It's just 1. So you can apply chain rule, but it'll be 1 itself. So you can leave it. Now, this would be the answer. Here, we know for root x, it is how much? For root x, it is 1 by 2 root x. But now we don't have root x. We have root x plus 1. So whatever was there instead of x, put that one. Chain rule applies here, but since it is just x, it will be 1 and 1 is this constant is 0. So this is it. This would be your answer for derivative. Let me just erase this. I hope that is clear. Now, so here I will just write that is the f dash of x term. Now, what is a value? a value is 0, b value is 3. Now, all you need to do is substitute in the calculator. Let me just clear it off everything. Now, it's better to clear your calculator regularly because in some cases, I have noticed with my students, though they substitute everything, they won't get the answer uh, correctly when they are using this x terms. So just clear your calculator by pressing shift 9, 3 equal ac now and then so that uh, you know you won't get any error so here now this is the formula integral square root 1 plus what about f dash of x it is 1 divided by 2 root alpha x plus 1 close the bracket square and now we need to put over here 0 to 3 and that is it. That's the answer. Did I put any? Did I miss anything? I think so. That's it, right? Yeah. Okay, the answer must be 3.168. Yeah, that's correct. So it's almost very, very close. It's almost the same answer. So yeah, here you just simplify and, uh, you know, you take the round it off to three digits. So this is how you solve it. You can stop watching this video now and solve other problems by yourselves. But I'll be solving them anyways. I will solve them in detail uh, just if you have any doubts. But if you're confident enough, if you understood the topic, just use the formula by yourself. This is the formula. Just use it and solve it up. Okay. Let me do this one as well. But I highly encourage you to solve it by yourself by now, for, from now. Here we have f of x as 1 by x. Now again, remember if f of x is... 1 by x. How do we solve it? Now, what, what I'll do is I will show you in detail how we get the formula, but then try to remember the formula directly. See, in my mind, it's already ingrained that 1 by x is minus 1 by uh, x squared, right? Yeah, 1 by x squared. But anyways, let's prove this. You know, this is the 1 by x. How do you derive it as basically? Bring this x to the numerator, it'll be x to the power minus 1. So this is not dash. Wait, let me just write it over here. This f of x can be written as x to the power minus 1. Now, use power rule here. Minus 1 will be brought down. x to the power minus 1, minus 1. You will be getting negative because minus 1 means negative sign. Negative x to the power minus 2. But now, we, I told you, right, we generally don't try, uh, uh, we try to make all the powers exponents positive. So what we do is negative 1 by x squared. Now it's positive. That's it. That's the derivative. So you do not need to do this all the time. Whenever you see 1 by x 
just write the derivative negative 1 by x squared. Now instead of x you had away x plus 1 then this would be negative 1 by x plus 1 the whole square. That's it. I hope this is clear. Now the answer for the, the derivative over here is negative 1 by x squared. Let me just clear the other things. So it's very important for you to remember this. It will save a lot of time in the exam, you know. So f dash of x. What is a value? 1, b value is 2. Now just substitute everything in the calculator. I will just rewrite. Uh, I'll just change this over here, you know, because you know how to write this, right? The same thing we have done a while ago. Here, I will change this all to alpha x squared. And this is negative sign over here. And what about the intervals? The upper interval is 2 and the lower interval is 1. And there you go. This would be the answer. Let's see. Yes, that's the answer. So this is how we basically solve it. Uh, you can see 1.32 and it's approximated instead of 0 as 1. Okay, we have two more problems. I'll quickly do them. But right now, I would highly encourage you all to solve them by yourselves. Here, I'll write the formula afresh. It will be arc length. That's equal to integral a to b square root 1 plus f dash of x the whole square dx. dx term will always be there in the calculator directly. Now, let's find f dash of x from the given. It will be 2x plus 1 becomes 0. This is the a value, b value. Substitute the calculator. All you need to do is use this symbol here, integral symbol, and use the square root 1 plus. This much is constant. It will be the same for everything. Now here, what is f dash of x? It is 2x, 2 alpha x, close the bracket, square it. And the interval is from minus 2 to positive 2. That's the answer, 9.29, sorry, 9.29. And uh, another problem here, the same thing, let's derive it. A value is negative 1, B value is positive 1, formula is the same. What is the derivation over here? F dash of x will be 3x squared plus 0. So I'm not going to write plus 0 again and again. And use the calculator here. It's, okay, I'll write it afresh again. Integral symbol here square root 1 plus open the bracket 3 alpha x squared close the bracket and square it out again the interval starts from negative 1 to positive 1 that's the answer make sure everything the interval all this is clear uh, properly written because if you do the wrong intervals you're going to get wrong answer i'll just show you it's just gonna uh, now if i flip this instead of plus minus to plus and plus to minus, I'm going to get negative answer. Say this is wrong, okay? Now you must remember this was lower limit first, then the upper limit, that's the greater number, and it is 3.0957, and that's the answer. So this is how you solve the first topic. I hope it is clear. That was about estimating the arc length of a given function, easy one, using the formula. See you all in the next topic. Bye-bye for now.